here's a story from a distant star about a planet called Zaponia, where the people cried and shook with fear, because the land was gone, the end was near. On an urgent mission to put it right, brave young Zippy, day and night, searched through space, till in view, came a spinning world of green and blue. Welcome to Ziku's Earth Adventure! And this is where it all begins in a world of science and earthling friends. We now cross to Zolauri Zoldemar live for a report from the Zarponian Intergalactic Arts Festival. Thank you, ZJ Snoop. Yes, things are hotting up here with people flocking to the various events on offer. One of the crowd favorites is the Zoranian Acrobatic Troupe, and also the Outer Zoltarian Drama Group has been receiving full houses. Some festival goers have been queuing for three Zarpons to get tickets for... Uh, we interrupt this report for a special transmission from Zarponia. Prime Councillor Zed Zandor calling Pod Controller Ziku. Calling Ziku. Come in, Ziku. Pod Councillor Ziku here, calling Zandor. Zandor! Zaudi Ziku? Zaudi Zandor? Hmm, you look very interesting today. What is that thing that you're waving about, so? I know Earth smells a little different to Zarponia, but really, is it that bad? Oh, this is a paper fan. Boggy made it for me. It's not used to wave away bad smells. Earthlings use it to help them cool down. We were playing in the sandpit at the park and it was very hot, so Wongi made each of us a fan. You wave it like this and then you feel cool. Wongi showed me how to make one, so I'm going to send you one for those long hot council meetings. Great galloping galaxy, thank you, Ziku. How very clever. Hmm. And perhaps this fan can come in handy with this mission. After your great success with your mission on how plants and animals adapt in wet places, we have a very important new mission for you today. Zap it to me, Zandu. A report has just come in from the valley regions of Zaponia. The triple suns in the fifth galaxy of Zaponia are having devastating effects on all living things there. It hasn't rained since the last triple eclipse and everything is dying out. We were hoping that you might be able to find out if there were plants and animals that have managed to live in very dry places on planet Earth. Find out how they have managed to adapt to these dry places. This is very urgent, Ziku. Please find out. Certainly, Zandal. I'll get onto it right away. Zoot luck. Over and out. Over and out, Zillion. We must hurry up with today's mission. Zandal looked worried. Are there any places on Earth that look like the area Zandal was telling us about on Zarponia? There are many dry parts in South Africa. Quite often, the little bit of rain that does fall does not fall in a regular way. Oh, nothing can live there. Well, in that case, you are going to get a nice surprise. Take a look at this. Zowie! Hang on. I think you've got the wrong place. Those are the most beautiful flowers I've ever seen. They can't grow in the desert like that. Hot, dry places do not always look the same all year round. Some of the plants that grow there can respond very quickly to the rain when it does rain. Their seeds can grow into flowering plants in just a few weeks. That is what you are seeing here. These plants have shallow roots that help them to absorb the water very quickly after the rain before the sun dries it up. Here, take a look at what these places are like before the rain. So these places that look dead become beautiful gardens of flowers. But what about times when there's no rain? Is there anything growing there then? You bet your last Zarponian silver coins there are. But I can't see any living thing there. Take a careful look, Ziku. There are very tiny plants growing here called lithops. They look very much like small stones. These are a kind of succulent. Succulents are plants that are adapted to live in dry places. They can store water inside them. Zowie! It looks like we'll be able to get some help from Earth again. Zillion, Zoob, keep 
please get some examples of hot and dry habitats and of animals and plants that live there. I'm off to see Betty the botanist and see if she can help me find out more about er uh, zuc zuculans, did you say? Succulent Siku. Zoom and I will do our duty for Zarponia. Freezing! <laughs> dry habitat, Zoom. We're not sending you underwater, not this time. Zum, zum, zoom. Come on, Zoom. You're made to hold up in water and heat. Don't be such a baby. Zippity zoop zoop. Hi, Betty. Hello, Zuku. Welcome back to our wonderful gardens. Why don't you take a seat? So, what can I show you today? I really enjoyed helping you learn more about the wetlands exhibition the other day. Thanks. All the information you gave me was amazing. And it really helped my pe I mean, it really helped me a lot with my school project. I need to find out about plants that live in hot, dry places. Um, the sucky ones. Are they succulents? Well, succulents have leaves and stems and they absorb lots of water. And they expand and become big and fat. You know, sometimes they can live for years without rain. But why don't you come along and I'm going to show you some of them. Come, Ziku. Zippy! There we go. Hi, Zeku. Can let me show you some more wonderful plants we have here. You see? Take a look at this one. This is an aloe. Ouch! What happened? This plant bit me. <laughs> oh, no. Plants don't bite. Those are thorns, not teeth. There's not generally a lot of food in dry places, so plants have to protect themselves from animals trying to eat them. And that's why they have spiny needles and thorns. Now the thorns, or this fluffy surfaces, can you feel it? Yes. Now they help to shade them from the sun and to keep them cool. So that means that these plants have adapted? Exactly. Their skins are thick and strong to help them protect from the hot sun. Come, let me show you some more. Great. <laughs> this plant looks very funny. It doesn't have any leaves. Well, some desert plants don't have leaves. They rely on their stems to help them to make food for the plants. And the leaves has now become thorns. <laughs> now, many plants that live in dry places have very, very small leaves. And this helps to prevent them from using um, unnecessary moisture. This plant looks like it died. Well, you know, some plants that live in extreme conditions, uh, they become dormant. What it means is they stop growing for a while. And uh, when that happens, they start losing their leaves and um, upper ground, they look like they're dead. But underground, they are still alive, just waiting to grow again. Zowie, I've learned a lot about some of these plants that live in dry places. It's amazing how clever plants are. Ouch! Yes, <laughs> and isn't it interesting the way that they protect themselves? I guess. This plant doesn't know that I'm not an animal who wants to eat it for lunch. Oh, thanks for all the information. I must get going now. I still have lots to find out about animals and the plants that live in dry places. Bye, Zippy. Bye. Bye, see you. It was nice helping you and I hope that you find all the things you're looking for. <laughs> okay. Welcome back, Pod Controller Ziku. Find out anything interesting? Zaudi Zillion, I found out lots of information about hot and dry places. Betty really helped me a lot. Did Zoom get the examples I asked for? I think I hear her approaching. Zoom, back again. You find examples? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, well, let's see these scary beasts. Ah, oh, that's a lizard. It's not really dangerous, Zoom. Look how it blends with its background. Zippity zoop zoop. Yes, almost as fast as you, Zoom. Generally, animals that live in hot, dry places need to save their energy, though. What is amazing about lizards is that if something is chasing a lizard, it can lose its tail. Although this is only done in very dangerous situations. The lizard stores fat in its tail that can be used to help it survive in times when there is little food. That's a great getaway plan. What else have you got? Zoom! Zoom! Yes, Zoom. This animal does rather look like a tank. It's called a tortoise. I can see why those shells can protect them. Hey, look. 
they can hide their heads, their feet and tails inside. It's like having a little roof to protect you and give you some cool shade. That's very cool. Tortoises are very good survivors and have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. Animals that live in hot, dry places need to be tough and able to go without food for long periods. I think a Zarponian bush weasel has a shorter nose, so... Exactly! This earth animal is very weird! It's an artfuck. They live in a burrow they dig underground during the daytime and come out at night when it's cooler. Its body is a bit like a pig. Look, it's got a long snout and pointed ears. It has a long, sticky tongue that is a bit like a straw. It uses it to suck up ants. Ew! Oh, I know that the art fog doesn't really chew its food much. It relies on its grinding stomach to digest its insect diet. Zowie! I have lots of information for Xandor that will help Zarponia. Xandor calling Ziku. Come in, Ziku. Zaudi Ziku. Zaudi, Xandor. How did your mission go? Very good, sir. Your paper fan is on its way. Well done, Ziku. Now let's concentrate on today's mission. Zapotomizillion. We have found out that plants are adapted to live in very hot places in many ways. Some can respond very quickly to rain and produce flowers and seeds in just a few weeks. Many store water in their leaves and stems and are called succulents. Some have very small leaves, others don't have leaves at all. This stops them from losing water. Some have spikes and thorns to stop animals from eating them. Spikes and thorns can also help to keep the sun off plants. Ah, interesting! The animals that live in hot, dry places are also very cool. They have special characteristics to help them to be able to live in hot, dry places. They make sure they don't waste energy. Look how the little lizard lies really still. They have also adapted to protect themselves like the tortoise's hard shell and the lizard losing its little tail. They move about in cooler parts of the day or at night. They find shelter and live in cool places or under the ground or between rocks. Well, this mission has been very successful. Congratulations, Zico. Thank you, Counselor. Over and out. Over and out, Counselor Zandel. Prepare to send information. Data drives engaged. Uploading files. Matrix ZZZZZZ. Completing transmission. Upload successful. Over and out. Zawi! Mission accomplished. Ziazun, Zillian. Ziggazun, Good night, good earth. Good luck, brave Zarponia.